So when you talk about an event like Hormade here, you got to talk about, about comparing and contrast to other haunts. Hormade here, in my opinion, this year was probably the best haunt. Why? Well, let's talk about it and break it down in full. This year I went to the Warner Brothers Hormade here experience and I have to say I had an amazing time. I love how interactive the event was first of all so that's what won me over the most. Um, another thing that won me over was of course the Batman Arkham Asylum maze which I enjoyed a lot. So you go into this maze and you uh, get in, you get a photo opportunity of uh, taking a picture on the height uh, bar and with the you know of course the little plaque that says where you're at your name and everything and you get to take a fun photo opportunity if you want to buy that or purchase that and then you wait and then Dr. Harleen Quinzel brings you into a room where it's like a courtroom and you see the Joker judging you and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun in this. We went through this maze twice and I had a lot of fun with this because uh, I was wearing a Robin logo in my Gotham City shirt. I'm a huge Batman fan and uh, Joker saw my Robin logo. He The first time we went through he went, if you guys, I was going to let you guys all go but now because he's wearing a Robin logo you guys got to go inside the asylum. I thought that was hilarious and stuff like that. And the second time I went through it he, he recognized me again and he goes, see stuff you can't wear in this asylum look at that kid's vest and yeah, I, I pointed at my Robin logo to the group and stuff and we had a fun time and stuff like that which was really cool when you go uh, from that room you go into an elevator and you're supposed to be going down into an elevator then you enter the asylum um, a girl pops out in the elevator right when before you uh, enter the asylum and she greets you in and the first room you see is Riddler you see a bunch of roaches which usually is involved with um, the scarecrow but it was making out uh, question mark so it uh, came down to the riddle the next room you go in is the morgue and that's when you see uh, scarecrow which he looked amazing and then when you go into the next room if you are fans of the games in Arkham Asylum you get to see the Wayne a dead body and scarecrow coming out you're supposed to be in scarecrow's toxin which is really cool as you progress through the maze you get to go through various villains the next villain being uh, Harvey Two-Face Dent which he looked awesome and I really enjoyed very much every time looking at him he looked really cool uh, as I went through you get to go see Poison Ivy which was pretty cool and then uh, the next villain after that is the Penguin aka Cobblepot which was really awesome the end of the maze for me is very memorable because when I walked through it it was uh, really really fun um, there was a scene where the Joker tells you to go to certain areas, but uh, he recognized my Robin logo and he goes, um, yeah, uh, I, I remember beating Robin with, uh, with the crowbar or something like that, and he made a reference, if you guys don't read the comics, Joker beat Jason Todd to death with a crowbar, and that's when he got uh, resurrected in the Lazarus Pit and came back as the infamous Red Hood, and um, Joker's just making that reference, and these guys actually knowing their stuff just honestly made the experience for me. I, I immediately told him, I got that reference, and he's like, you know, not many people do and stuff like that, and I was like, yeah, well, you're looking at you're talking to. But uh, had an amazing time with that, and uh, yeah. And then you get out of the maze, and you get to talk to Harley Quinn, and Harley Quinn was really cool as well, so that was fun. Uh, the second time I went around, too, with the Joker, he actually had the crowbar, and he let me take a picture with him. I'm going to put that on the screen right now, and it was such an awesome experience, so yeah. The next maze we're going to talk about is the first maze we went through night which was the conjuring experience which was really really well put together like i said with this event i loved how interactive they were and it was just amazing so in this maze you go through the warren house and you get to the warren collection and stuff like that what scared the shit out of me is when you walked in the uh when you walked into the the first room while you're waiting there's a bunch of mannequins with sheets on you don't know if they're real or not spoiler they're not real but uh then you walk into another room and you wait to go into the warren room and there's an upstairs uh, like house area where there's like a door and stuff and it goes upstairs. I kind of knew probably uh, someone from the Conjuring universe was going to pop out and the one person I thought it was going to be was Valak. I was paying attention up there the entire time. I didn't see anything, but right when we left, Valak popped out and it scared the shit out of me. Um, then from there, you go into the Warren room, you get to see their collection and stuff like that, and they're supposed to be showing you the newly displayed Annabelle doll, but unfortunately, Annabelle is missing from the... Uh, 
case and they don't know where she went and that's when a lot of stuff falls on the floor and stuff like that and that's when um, the whole uh, experience starts. Then you go to this next room and these doors start rattling and they rush you out to the next house where you go into a room and you see Annabelle. It, it feels really cold in there that's giving it a more paranormal experience and stuff like that. Uh, and then they have an actor where uh, when these closet doors open they do the clap game and then they have an actor that gets sucked in and pulled in. When you go into the next room then from Conjuring 1 you do see the girl getting possessed in the chair which was a pretty scary experience the way they made it look. Uh, and then you get to see a lot of the famous ghosts like the, the maid with her wrist slit and stuff like that. That was pretty cool to see. You also got to see the same possessed woman but hung up and stuff like that which was really cool. From there you end up going into the last room of the maze where you see a picture of Valak. The whole room is destroyed and it looks really really scary and the picture of Valak if you guys don't know from the second Conjuring movie that picture is when Valak is from behind and then grabs the picture and runs towards them. They reenacted that scene and I have to say it was pretty scary. I really enjoyed that maze though and I, like I said I love how interactive they are in these houses and stuff like that. Um, Another maze that was really good was the Kneebolt House experience, which was the It maze, which was really cool. It knows what you fear, um, and that was really, really awesome. We got to go through and see a lot of the iconic scenes from the first uh, It remake movie, and I really enjoyed it. And I have to say, uh, you know, just one of my favorite scenes in there was when uh, you got to see the Henry, Henry Bowers game. Um, I have a really cool, another fun story. Uh, one of the, the one of the boys wears an Anthrax T-shirt, and I am a huge like metal fan, so Anthrax is, is really cool. And uh, I saw his Anthrax T-shirt. I was like, Hey, Anthrax, I like that band too. And he goes, oh, Okay, you're cool. Just go get your loser friend and get out of here. So I was like, just kind of laughing at that. Um, but it opens up where you walk through the house and you see uh, Henry Bowers' his dad is dead on the chair, and of course they have the TV that says Kill Him, Kill Him All, which looks uh, really, really cool. Then you walk through. Um, a bunch of different rooms. You can see all the papers on the wall, all the research the Losers Club have been doing. Of course, you see the new kids on the block poster, which I thought was funny. And as you keep walking through, you see a lot of the references from the movies and stuff like that. You go through the next room and you see the kid with the decapitated head, and that looked pretty cool. That was one of the things I really wanted to see in the maze as far as uh, iconic scenes and stuff like that, which was really cool. The next thing you see is when you go through is you go through Beverly's bathroom where it's all bloody and stuff and she's all bloody. I honestly thought she looked like Carrie for a minute, but it, it was pretty cool. Then you got Pennywise in the shower and pops out and stuff like that. Um, as you go on, you see a lot more iconic scenes. Uh, you go through uh, the, the basement where Georgie's at and you see Georgie saying, you'll float too, you'll float too. You see a lot of Bowers' gangs trying to taunt you and stuff like that, which was really cool. Um, you see a lot more of the iconic monsters. The, uh, one of the monsters they had in there that that uh, he looked all nasty and disgusting when uh, one of the kids was picking up his pills. He's in there and he coughed all over my face and it just splattered water and I thought that was a cool experience. Um, you see the painting of the lady that looks all deformed and stuff. That was pretty scary and stuff like that. Uh, one of the one of my favorite parts though, another favorite part I have in this maze was when you go check the, the three doors that says um, not scary at all, scary and very scary. Um, there's something in each door, but one of the doors is open to go through the maze, but Pennywise is in that room, and I was talking to Pennywise, who's like a big fan and stuff like that, and I was like, hey, by the way, we have a Georgie in our group, and he goes, where's Georgie, and he started to go and look for him and stuff like that, and that was, that was really funny and stuff like that, but nonetheless, I love the It house, and that was really fun and stuff like that. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be uh, the Freddy vs. Jason, uh, uh, you know, the... Uh, it's like a walkthrough in the forest and stuff like that, which was really cool. The setting was at Camp Crystal Lake, and I thought they could have picked a better place to do it. Um, when you get in, you get off, you know, the you get a ride there from the actual event to the to their back lot set of where that's at. And the driver is instructing you that you're going to a camp and that it should be fun. It just opened up. The counselors are waiting for you. It should be fun. They're making references of like Freddy and Jason and stuff like that throughout there, so it makes it interactive. Um, as you get off, the counselors are kind of scared and they're screaming and stuff like, don't go over there, he's over there, and you finally see Jason. Jason ends up trying to kill one of the counselors and stuff like that. As you walk through the forest, you hear Freddy and you see Freddy, uh, you see Freddy and Jason a lot. Um, one of the most memorable things I remember in this was uh, we saw Freddy and we thought, he, he said, welcome to my nightmare, and before that though, he said, welcome to my nightmare, bitch, that's one of his most famous lines and we think it's funny, uh, me and my group, and we were hoping he would say it, we were even telling his character. We won't tell anybody, just say it. We really love that line. 
Um, as you walk through, you go end up in a campsite where you see a bunch of dead people, and you see one of them is actual an actor, and it's actually Freddy. You're supposed to meet him in the nightmare. As you keep going, you see Jason, and then you get an archery range where you see people on the uh, targets, and they're dead. Uh, you walk through a cabin, and you're seeing a bunch of dead people. The cabin's all messed up. Jason and Freddy are there trying to kill one another. It's a really good experience, and I really enjoyed it, um, and stuff like that. The last thing we did of the night was the Exorcist Forbidden Screening. Now, like I said in my video that for Horror Made Here, I didn't hear a lot of reviews on this, so I want to get in-depth of it, and I want to really uh, tell you what it was about. So the setting is, you walk into this church, and the church is having a forbidden screening of the exorcist. Someone finally convinced them to have this screening, and they've been trying to throw it off because they know bad stuff happens when you watch this movie. As you're going and watching the movie, you see a lot of stuff uh, progressing in the church. They have nuns, they have a priest, and they have the, the preacher who's like kind of hosting the event and stuff like that. You actually sit in church pews, which I thought was really cool, and I really thought um, it brought the experience to life. The church pews were very interactive as well. They sprayed stuff at you. There was air that was blowing from under and stuff like that as scenes progressed, and I thought it was awesome. As the movie goes on, they show some of the scariest parts of The Exorcist, and they show uh, a lot of like the iconic scenes and stuff like that but as the movie progresses you start seeing weird stuff happening in the church they have a bunch of statues where the eyes start glowing red and orange um, then you start seeing it starts getting colder in there you start seeing like uh, I think like the, the windows are like supposed to be interactive and stuff so you start seeing those kind of like change or like crack and stuff like that but as it goes scarier and scarier like you're seeing the nuns interacting with people throughout the movie and stuff and they're, they're acting all creepy and stuff like that uh, and then um, one of the scary parts happens and you, that's when you first see and encounter Reagan where she pops up at the stand where the preacher was standing and uh, she looks pretty cool and then uh, the movie goes back to it and then we see Reagan again pop up and then that's what ends the, the screening where, where he says I'll cast you out demon and then the screening just ends and then they rush everyone out I really enjoyed it the, the thing that made it more alive too is when you're leaving as you're leaving there's confessional booths I don't know if uh, in, in the Catholic religion uh, they go to confession to confess their sins to a priest. In this, you're supposed to be like in a Catholic church, and as you're walking out, you're seeing people wait for confession, which I thought was really cool. Um, but uh, nonetheless, I, I really enjoyed this event. Um, it was cool. The museum was really cool. I, I put the full walkthrough on that, so if you want to check that out, it's on my channel right now. But I really enjoyed this event nonetheless, and I had a really good time. I went with the group, and I think this group is gonna we're going to try to all go every year. This is going to be like our new yearly tradition. We had a, such an amazing time, and I really enjoyed myself. But uh, the only thing I would, I would, if I could change anything, uh, it would be just two things. Um, they need more like... Uh, since this is our first year, I get it. I'll give them a pass. But more scare actors out in the field would probably be more uh, an interactive. I saw like the same five all night, which they were all really good and really funny and cool. But I want more just to just have a better experience. And in the mazes, they should do more lighting and sound effects when someone pops out, just like how Horror Nights does. And I really think that would make the event a lot bigger. But nonetheless, Horror Made Here, a festival of frights at Warner Brothers Studios, probably one of the best horror events for me. I liked it better than Horror Nights. Horror Nights is second on the list, um, and the thing that saved Horror Nights for me was Stranger Things and Universal Monsters. But nonetheless, I loved Horror Made Here, and I'm definitely going to go back next year. Thank you guys for watching this in-depth review of Horror Made Here. If you guys like my content, please hit that like button, hit that red subscribe button, and right next to that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification to find out every time I put up a new video. That way you guys can check me out and leave some comments and stuff like that. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Madhouse. If you guys are just subscribed, welcome to the Madhouse. I really love all my inmates of the Madhouse, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.